I was confronted by a tray and crockery return crisis. And I got to the root of this disgraceful behavior. I guess it's not a Singaporean thing yet. And I revealed the burden our poor dining etiquette creates for others. Food trays can actually carry uh, bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella from the previous host and then this can actually transmit to the next person touching it without protection. In this episode, I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm going to shock Singaporeans by showing them the scale of their tray return habit, or rather, lack thereof, and introduce a new solution powered by technology that could be the final push to get Singaporeans to clear up after themselves. I commissioned Audrey Ng, a visual artist, to create a structure. Even though we are not aware about this thing, I hope that this thing can bring awareness and remind us that we need to clean up our tree. I think the best thing to do is just to return our tree, and it's just that simple. I am unveiling it today. This installation is a reflection of our inaction. There's 300 unreturned trays there. This is what we can collect in our hawker centre. You guess how long we collect 300 trays? Maybe lesser than one month. Ah. We can see. Less than half a day. For 30 hours. In just one hour. One hour? Yeah. Oh, so fast, so fast. One hour. Like two months. Ah. Oh, <laughs> it's one hour. One hour in one hawker centre, we can accumulate 300 unreturned trays. How does that make you feel? Very scared. Why are you scared? Because many people never return the trays, other people could not see it. Has that happened to you before? Yeah. There's 300 unreturned trays here and these were collected in just one hour at one hawker centre. Oh my, I think it has a lot. La. It's quite shocking also la, actually. Why is it shocking? I think that so many of us actually just leave the trays for others to play. And then uh, accumulatively, it's all like a mess. La. I feel like we should have the, our own responsibility to clear our trays. Do you think it's a challenge to convince more Singaporeans to return their trays? That will be difficult because you have to start from young. Hundreds saw this structure that day, but is that enough to jolt Singaporeans into action? Since 2003, there have been national campaigns aimed at getting us to return our trays, but there's been little success. So in 2016, we leaned on technology for a solution via an automated tray return deposit system. This system was pioneered by private operator Timber Group. Timber said they saw tray return rates jump to a whopping 98% since the system was introduced. Here at Timber, no matter what food you buy, hawkers must issue a tray to the diner and I have to pay a $1 deposit for the tray. Hi, uh, one fried rice with chilli. I'll get my $1 back only when I return my tray to this automated tray return station at the end of my meal. Despite the success at Timber, only nine hawker centres in Singapore have similar automated tray return systems. I want to know why. So I'm making my way to a hawker centre in Badook. 
The automated tray return system was introduced in this Hawker Centre in 2019. Here, hawkers charge you 50 cents if you want a tray. No exceptions. You'll get that 50 cents back when you return the tray. But I'll soon realize it's not a popular system. Okay, so far so good. Some they like, some they don't like. It depends on individual. Hmm. 可是這個系統在這邊已經差不多一年了Oh, it turns out some diners are upset they were made to pay 50 cents for a tray, even though they would get their money back later. Now, some even flat out refuse a tray. The hawkers, on the other hand, are upset because it affects their business since they face the brunt of some diners' fury. No wonder this system hasn't been widely adopted. If the current systems are not effective enough, perhaps it's time to be a little creative. We have a sensor that is put under the, the table so that you will detect the humans sitting down there. When they are leaving, this sensor will alert people. Tens of thousands of dollars go into incorporating an automated tray return system into a hawker centre, which typically require diners to pay a 50 cent or one dollar deposit to get a tray. They get their money back when they return their used crockeries and food trays. It seems like a logical solution to force diners to clear up after themselves, but some hate the idea, and hawkers end up facing the brunt of the insults. So here's the thing, despite the issues I've learned about the automated trade return system, the National Environment Agency, the government body overseeing public hawker centres here, says the system will be rolled up to over 25 hawker centres over the next few years. Now, I wonder what will happen when the system is mandated across the island. For some answers, I've arranged to meet Ong Seong Jiun, he is the cleaning contractor for this hawker centre in Bukit Merah, and he worked with the NEA to implement this automated tray return system here. Why do you specifically charge 50 cents for one tray? Why 50 cents? Okay. Initially, we tried uh, a dollar. So after a year, we received a lot of feedback from the customers and they told that a dollar for a tray deposit is too expensive. So we lowered down to the 50 cents range and yeah, there's more trays that customers took. I think most people agree that 50 cents is not a lot of money, and yet there are some diners who are upset about that. Why is that so? Because all along they have been you know, using trays without paying for a deposit. So they feel a little bit upset and us. So why do I have to pay 50 cents for just a tray and I have to return utensils and properties myself to get back their 50 cents? I'm about to find out that the automated tray return system also features a centralised cleaning system for the hawkers. All the trays and soiled crockeries are soaked and scrubbed here, a cleaning area usually located behind the automated tray return stations. So this is where the trays will come in and the soil crockery. So the cleaners will collect from the from this area and soak the soil crockery over here. After that, you do some scrubbing and send it to the washing machine. 
After the manual scrubbing, the trays and crockeries enter an automated washing machine that uses boiling water to give the crockeries one last clean. So this is the machine that uses hot water to clean the soy crockery. And after it exits, this gentleman here, he will consolidate all the clean crockeries and pack it to every individual car holders. The idea is to streamline the cleaning process while ensuring that trays and crockeries are returned to hawkers in a quick and efficient manner. I've spoken to some hawkers and they were upset about the centralised tray deposit system because they feel that their business has been affected. Do you agree? No. Nope. In fact, it improved their business as well. Because when the customers use trays and they return it, the table will be immediately available for the other customers, whereby the next customer will have to wait for the table, for the cleaner to clean the table. Do you think we should implement this tray return deposit system throughout the island? Yes, because this system not only benefits the hawkers themselves, it benefits the elderly cleaners. Before this system started over here, the cleaners that I have, they are carrying very heavy tubs of crockery around everywhere. After this system started, their only job now is to wipe the cave table, urge the customers to return their own trays or crockery. Yeah, so it's made life much more easier for the elderly cleaners. But older hawker centres might need to undergo renovation and upgrading for this system to work as they need space for the facilities and the machines. And the second most important point is the 100% buy-in of the hawkers and the customers. We've invested a lot into these automated tray return systems and even though they have achieved some success in getting Singaporeans to return their food trays and used crockeries, it's clearly a solution that cannot work for all food establishments. I need to up my game, find a way that will force Singaporeans to return their food trays and a system that is not too onerous for the hawkers. I've enlisted the help of Professor Chen Yiming, a robotics expert. He thinks he knows how he can help nudge Singaporeans to return their food trays and used crockeries and has agreed to work with me to develop a prototype. Joining us is Lu Deliang, a behavioural scientist who was involved in national projects to improve food tray return rates. The automated tray return system still has some issues, so we need to get more creative to get more Singaporeans to return our food trays. De Liang, from a behavioural science point of view, what are the top factors that we need to consider with this new method? People don't actually pay attention to their routine behaviours. In this case, after they finish their meals, they don't return their trays. So we need to get them to pay attention to that. Perhaps, maybe we can have more triggers to alert them to behavioural returning tray and prompt them to make their decisions. At the moment, we already have certain reminders such as the public announcements and even lots of banners everywhere. How should this trigger be different? I think the current announcements, they are more on the overhead, tend to fall on deaf ears, especially in a very crowded hawker centre setting where it's noisy. So I think perhaps we can bring the trigger closer attention to them in the table that they're sitting or even address to them personally. So get attention. Prof, I've got three key points here. A trigger, that is personal to the end user and also something that's likely to get their attention. What are your thoughts? Okay, I think just right out of my head is that we can use uh, lights and sound just right on the tabletop so that when people are finishing the meal, this reminder will immediately alert them that they need to return the trays. So this will be very close and very effective because most people treat your uh, public announcement as a background noise, this will immediately catch attention. That sounds potentially like it's going to get a lot of attention, but how would you know when the diner is about to leave? We have an additional sensor that is put under the table so that you will detect the human sitting down there and then when they are leaving, then this uh, sensor will alert people and trigger the system having the light and sound. I think we have tried so many things. Maybe it's time to really go crazy with our ideas. So I'm looking forward to seeing this contraption. And thank you. I'm giving Professor Chen and his team four weeks to retrofit tables at a hawker centre. They are adding to the light sensor a voice prompt. Please return your tray. 
hopefully this would not only serve as a reminder but also attract sufficient attention of the people around. With this, there is no excuse for diners to leave their food trays behind. Please return your tray. It's been four weeks since I set behavioural expert De Liang, as well as Professor Chen and his team, the task of revolutionising our hawker dining experience. Something that will force us to return our food trays. I am unveiling this technology at Maxwell Food Centre, popular with the office crowd from the nearby business district. Now this hawker centre doesn't have an automated tray return deposit system. Hi, how's it going? So this system actually create awareness for the people to return the tray. There is a sensor below. It yeah. will detect the presence of the people having their lunch. So I'm so going to sit to... down here with my tray? Yeah, you sit down there for about 10 seconds. Let's say I finish eating and I'm just to up and go. Yeah, so it will light on. Please return the tray. Sounds okay, not yep. rude or intrusive, it's quite soothing. So I don't think people will get offended yeah, or definitely. upset. As the team is placing the finishing touches on our system, I want to know what the hawkers think about our bold experiment. I've deployed three surveyors to track the tray return rates. Their job is to see if the tables with the devices will see higher tray return rates than tables without. Based on our own estimates, food tray return rates at this hawker centre is a dismal 5%. As the experiment begins, some Singaporeans are still oblivious to the presence of the system and continue to leave their trays and used crockeries behind. Please return the tray. We are running the social experiment. Oh, okay. Have you noticed at the table that you were eating? Did you notice the light? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you notice what it said as well, the announcement? No. Did you see the light going yeah, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but you cannot hear the sound. You cannot hear the sound. The light blinking and blinking. What did you think it could have mean? It could have mean to signal to the auntie to help clean. Please return the tray. You want to return, right? Yeah. You sit here. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to carry, you don't know where. To, you know what I mean? Right. So your issue is that even if you want to return, you cannot you find know, the tray uh, return know. station. Let me chasing this guy. It's been the culture that you finish and then you leave it there. Yeah, then the auntie will help me now. Do you think this could work? Like if we do it in hawker centres? Maybe in a different language because uh, most people coming here, uh, the common language I would say is of course English. But Chinese is also a, a way to remind them. You just came from this side, right? Yes. Do you hear that light? 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 Yes, yes. The tray. Do you know that he wants to return the tray? Yes, I will return it. Oh. I am starting to worry. This prototype might not be doing enough to get Singaporeans to return their trays and crockeries. But soon enough. Diners are taking heed of my device and returning their trays. Could it be that my prototype actually works? Our social experiment lasted for three hours during the peak hour lunchtime. I am keen to know the results. So I'm back with behavioural scientist De Liang, who had also been observing the experiment. OK, so De Liang, you've got the results. Tell okay. me. We found that uh, for those tables with the triggers, with the device, about 66% actually returned their trays on cue compared to the other group which only 5% returned. Oh my goodness, it's, it's way higher than what I expected. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised, what about you? 
It's good. I'm surprised too because it's a good result. 66% that shows that there's a prevailing norm that people are willing to return trays on queue. Please return So this device, I think it serves a purpose that uh, it sends a very strong and very obvious reminder to return trays. So it's unlike the typical things that we do. This is right at the table they are sitting. So it's very close to you. So it's unlikely that you will miss this intervention. It just triggers that behaviour. How scalable do you think this is? For this particular gadget, um, it may not be feasible to implement at all hawker centres. I think people don't really associate tray return with sirens. Okay? <laughs> so people associate sirens with alerts and warnings. Well, that's not something that we want to promote in hawker centres relating to tray return. But it actually shows us the potential if we do it right. Like food buzzers with that kind of tray return triggers. So there's something less intrusive but more customizable. With all this in place, and with the cleaners' rules redefined to encourage people to return tray, I think we will work there. So we should encourage the good norms. What will that take? Okay, so a few things. Number one, very clear and uh, available tray return stations. The second thing, good publicity, good triggers. So your triggers must be able to be very obvious. So this example here, it's a very obvious and in-the-face trigger. Number three, we should redefine the cleaner's role so we are not taking over the cleaner's job. The cleaners sanitize the tables, right? If all this comes together, then I think we will be able to, to, to shift the needle. Over the past two months, I've tried everything to get Singaporeans to return their food trays and used crockeries. From stopping cleaners from clearing the food trays, to building a tower of shame, to retrofitting tables that trigger diners to return their food trays and used crockeries. Now, each experiment has shown me that given the right circumstances, Singaporeans can return their food trays and used crockeries. But the real test is to do so without social cues and monetary pressures. So it may not move the needle much for now, but I will always be returning my food trays and used crockeries to the tray return station. I hope you join me too.